Hi. Hi. How are you? Great. Yeah. Welcome to the, the Dance Floor Schools live demo. My name is Joe Demers. And I am Winifred Harris. And we are so thrilled to be bringing this to you today. We wanted to uh, take today to tell you all about our programming and our vision and the love that we have for dance and to share that, to build a conversation with you and to share that with you. Yes. So I would love to let you know the reason that this curriculum came about. We both love dance. We both love our students. And we know that it's important for everyone to have the opportunity to understand dance different techniques at different levels. But we're also very concerned about the teachers who are teaching it. And we want them to feel as empowered as we may have felt when we moved or when we taught. And so Korea Movement was born so that we could help our students and our teachers. And I was one of those students, Winifred, I, uh, it was in high school that I started to uh, dance. I had never danced before that. It was my high school uh, programming that got me into dance and I fell in love with it. I found community. I went and uh, became a professional swing dancer. And after uh, learning and building my love of dance, I decided to venture into teaching in the public school system. And I, I had this big head and I was like, I've danced all over the world. I've taught dance. I'm going to go into the public schools and I will teach dance to these young children. And I felt like I sunk. <laughs> it was so hard. And, um, and I, uh, after meeting you, Winifred, you helped me out and to, and build a curriculum where I actually felt myself empowered and my students felt empowered. And so I'm so grateful for you being in my life and, and for developing this curriculum with me. Well, thank you. And I think that it's really a magical thing. So a little bit about me. I started dancing uh, younger, I will say, and I had the opportunity to move into dance because it was a way of communicating without communicating as a lot of dancers do. And for myself, I felt it was very, very necessary for my soul development. So I actually started dancing in a company um, pretty young. At 16, I started my professional career. And I continued with dance throughout my life. And, um, so I'm really happy to be in a place where I'm Associate Artistic Director, that I have had my own dance company, that I've moved around the world in dance. So I've been a dancer, teacher, choreographer, and love of movement for all these years. And meeting Joe was really a godsend for both of us because high school dance was very important to me and what we did there and how we get to express ourselves. So knowing that you have a talent like Joe, who has done so many things around the world, but how do we capitalize that and put it into a curriculum where other teachers that might be in the public school system haven't had the opportunity to really drill down and say, how do I communicate this with my students? And how then do I codify this, make sure that it's up to standards and make sure that this journey that we take is an easy one. And I want to say that because you have to engage. And then with this curriculum that's been built, you are meeting all of those standards. And that's the beauty of the relationship that Joe and I have. He understands what needs to happen in the high school school system. And I love the arts and I love being able to express myself in movement. But most of all, teaching is the goal. Joe, do you want to talk about the curriculum? Yeah, I would love to talk about the curriculum. And I wanted to comment that I I wish teaching dance in the public school system were easy like that, Winifred. And and so I think in in developing our curriculum, one of our goals was to ease the administrative expectations, mm -hmm. right? That's submitting lesson plans, 
differentiation, adding diversity to the curriculum, uh, just the assessment piece and data, it's really overwhelming. And, and so as we take a look at our curriculum, these are the pieces that we, we seek to fill as well as provide a, a, a vertically aligned and progressive uh, curriculum, right? From beginning day one, all the way through day 90, these students are gonna progress in a streamlined manner uh, and everything is gonna connect. So let's take a look at that uh, here now. Okay, so this is, uh, our high school dance curriculum is called Korea Movement. And uh, we are Dance for Schools. And uh, so we are a publishing company, so we can create and publish curriculum uh, for teachers. And currently we only have our high school curriculum available, but over the next year and two, we will expand that into middle school and elementary school. And as you saw us earlier, Winifred and I are the creators. And we hold a vision that dance around that we want every student around the world to have access to dance and we want to empower educators uh, with a comprehensive curriculum where they feel confident in teaching their students um, whether it's movement literacy whether it's technique composition or history and so in our curriculum uh, you know we are striving for a successful year and let's see what that entails so every lesson um, includes a full lesson plan and each day has a slightly different theme. Uh, the units progress uh, from, from the first lesson all the way through the end and you'll see some commonalities. In every lesson we have content language objectives. So you have the objective of dance, you have the objective of language including dance vocabulary, uh, we have assessments embedded in every question. Uh, you'll notice that uh, here that our curriculum is hosted on a teacher portal. And so it's really easy to access. You just log into the teacher portal. You select the lesson or the unit that you want, and you can schedule it to a calendar. And then you can even print that calendar. It holds the standards, and you give it to your administrator. And you say, this is what I'm teaching this week. Here's the objectives. Here's the standards everything you might need, uh, they might need to know uh, with regard to what's happening in your classroom. Uh, we are aligned to the National Core Arts Standards. Uh, we set every uh, lesson to be 40 minutes long. I, for, in my school, our classes are 51 minutes long. And after students change out, and after we check in and we take attendance, my class typically is about 35 to 40 minutes. And so that's what we were considering as we were developing every lesson. And every lesson has instructional videos. So whether it's a warm-up technique, an across-the-floor progression, or a combination, there's a video to support every movement. The curriculum has follow-along instructions. As I stated earlier, content language objectives. We have word walls ready to print. We have assessments ready to print. Uh, lots of different resources including powerpoints for history and every activity within the lesson has differentiation some ideas to go up some ideas some ideas to scaffold down here's an example of a history uh, presentation so jose limon is one of our our pioneers of modern dance we have exit tickets for every single lesson and so in this lesson lesson 83 we're asking students to compare a contraction, a curve, and a release. We have uh, data sheets for teachers. So all the teachers have to do is enter their students, look at the rubric, assign how students are doing, and then enter it into our data sheet. It's ready to print so that there are whole class data sheets as well as individual student data sheets for them to reflect on their growth. Uh, this is the an example of a video uh, that we uh, talked spoke about earlier. Uh, high quality videos with counts. We have uh, we have breakdowns, and and as we keep saying, every single lesson has videos to support uh, instruction. Here's an example of a word wall. This is a gesture 
chapter from our uh, unit three, Spiral Curves. Uh, we also embed uh, throughout the curriculum writing. Uh, we know how important it is that we include writing and academic language in our content area. And so this is also from unit three, uh, Poetry in Action, where students uh, go through a process of making a poem and then they create a dance for their poem. So before we get moving with Winifred, uh, let's take a moment to see if anyone has questions. See if anyone's posted anything. Hey, beautiful. And while we're taking a look at that, I just wanna um, say that Joe and I coming together to create this was uh, pretty magical, right? So there was an opportunity to come in and workshop and we were thinking, well, how can we really make a statement about dance and about the importance that everyone, everyone has the opportunity to have a lasting impression about movement, whether it's something that they'll do professionally or whether it's something that they start with so that they can engage and, and grow appreciation. This helps us in our total uh, art development and our total opportunity for philanthropy and or just the encouragement that the arts will continue. You see anybody there, Joe? Yes, we did have one, one question. Here we go. I'm gonna post it. Uh, Danielle asks, why did we decide to start with modern dance rather than other dances first? Ah, well, I will say that modern dance form is a freer dance form, yet it connects so many different styles together. So once you learn the vocabulary of a tandu, it can transfer into different um, dance forms. Also, it allows for the students Right, there are a lot of beginning students in high school. So it allows them a little more freedom of their body language and understanding how to move and feel expanded and understand what contraction means without it being scary, right? Contraction, we all pull back. And sometimes in other techniques, they are so structured that it doesn't allow your flexibility of the body and people have a preconceived idea of what that looks like. So I don't want to miss represent there is a structure to the modern dance form yet it allows for people to enter it in a more free fashion i also felt modern dance allowed us to bring together uh, a multitude of dance styles uh, crossing over the techniques from ballet uh, some of the world dance styles with percussive energy uh, a lot of the creative uh, dance and and such as space time and energy uh, all that language was very easily incorporated into uh, our modern dance curriculum. And as we, as we expand Korea movement, uh, which is this year to include world dance forms, we have a foundation to build on, to build on this language, uh, to build on the, this type of energy that, that, we, that the students progress through. And, and they'll probably find it a little bit uh, easier to access the movement uh, as they move from different styles, right? From West African dance uh, into jazz dance, into ballet. And so we wanted to establish a strong foundation of this language. Yeah. Okay, well, Winifred, what do you think about a little dance demonstration? Okay, we're gonna do a little movement. Now I'm gonna say this, you know, I cannot see you, but feel free to get up and do this with me, okay? So I just wanna talk about a couple of things first. One of the things that's really important is spatial design, right? Level changes and quality so that people who are moving and moving together can understand how that works. So we're gonna work with straight lines and we're gonna do some level changes and we do some exercises with this so you can break it down into um, counts and they understand a uh, tempo or a cadence also directions and how to use the body in two different fashions simultaneously, all right, and rhythm, so that the rhythm aspect comes forth in front for you to work with and understand where a student might have more opportunity for growth. So I'm gonna move my chair.
And we're going to start with level changes, okay? And the level changes we're going to take is a medium level, a low level, and a high level. And how we're determining that is just by your waist. So your low level is anything below your waist. Your medium level is even with your waist. And your high level is above your waistline. We're going to take some straight arms, all right? And so however you want your arms to be, we're going to take that movement. So you can do follow with me. I'm starting at a low level. And I'm going to stay here for four counts. One, two, three, four. I'm going to change to a high level. One, two, three, four. And a medium level. One, two, three, four. And then your own level, they'll choose one, two, three, four. Again, now we're going to count that off in eights. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the end count, bring everything together. Hands come in and you walk around to your right with straight arms, airplane movement, walking. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to call this a chest pump, but this goes into our ethnic dance as well. Five, six, seven, eight. Change directions. Left, around, three, four, go. Five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to come up with straight arms, and we're going to take what they will know as a chenet. We'll call it a wide turn, and we step out. One, two, three, rhythm on the clap, four, five, six, seven, rhythm on the clap, eight. All right, so let's go from the beginning all together. And your students will can rehearse this movement all the way across the floor, and this is a culminating combination. So we start down. One, two, three, four, high level, six, seven, eight, medium level, two, three, four, their own level, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, chest pump, six, seven, second side, go left, right, left, right, chest pump, six, seven, now you do a wide turn, two, three, clap, four, five, six, seven, clap, eight. beautiful. So that is one phrase, but all those phrases can be taken in the center floor at different tempos and also across the floor so that they understand the flow of what it is they will be doing. All right? And moving forward, you'll see that we do that with curved arms. You see that we can do that in a fashion where everyone gets to run out and become. So I'm going to now get... Uh, my glasses, because I left them back there. And Joe will join us again. Back, yes. So that was our Unit 1 combination from, uh, part of our Unit 1 combination from Korea Movement. The units progress from straight and curved shapes. That's, that's our first unit. And after about 10 to 12 lessons, uh, we shift into angular shapes. Following angular shapes, we go into spiral shapes. And so these are our first three units. After these units, we move into the energies of dance. We go into percussive energy. We then go into sustained energy. We go into suspended and collapsing energy. Sometimes we call it fall and recovery. And then the seventh unit of Kriya Movement Modern is swinging energy. And so the idea is that we're building vocabulary, we're building body coordination uh, over seven units and, and empowering students really to feel good about their expression. Uh, you know, in, in my dance class, we have students who have never danced in their life. And then I have, of course, have studio trained dancers. And so how can we bring these students together? How do we engage students, especially those who are reluctant uh, into a curriculum? Well, we, we really consider these high level questions as we develop the curriculum, you know, whether it's, it's progressing from one day to the next, 
whether it's including uh, assessment, vocabulary, composition, uh, all of these different techniques, um, daily questioning, differentiation, uh, everything coming together into a beautiful curriculum to support high school dance. Yes, and I, I want to say that there was a question that we got on our Facebook page, and I'd like to address this, not during this slide, but there was a question about why some people don't allow their children to dance. They felt it was too provocative. And I yes. want to say that what has been beautiful about the work that Joe and I have done together is that he has been able to work in a place where there's so many diverse cultures. And we're not saying that you have to dress in this fashion completely, but we explain why a dress code is important, communication with your students so that they feel comfortable in how they dress, and an understanding the expression of movement is not always in a seductive manner. And so that is a really important thing to communicate to your students so they can hopefully communicate that to their, um, their guardians. Because what you don't want to have happen is you never want a student to go away feeling like they couldn't. And so there's a way in which this can happen and the exercises, warm-ups, and combinations that we've chosen are there so that everyone can feel themselves come together. And in some of those um, exercises, they get to express really from their own inner core. And that is what makes the beauty of community in this Korea dance movement. Yes. And I think part of it is the language that we use the positivity and the mindsets that we help students develop. You know, um, we, we really, dance in the classroom can bring a lot of joy. And, and I think with our curriculum, I think we held that as a value, but I don't think it was our only value, you know, because we want students to walk away from this empowered in knowledge, empowered in body, empowered in spirit. Um, and so as you speak, Winifred, you remind me of, of so many of my students mm. who just need to hear that message again, that it's okay to move your body. It's okay to be you. Let's learn as much as you can, even after this one year with me, if you'll never dance again, right? Yep. These students, they develop a deep appreciation of the art form and of dance education. We had another comment, um, Danielle again, she said, dance is so important. How can we help make dance a standard aspect of public schools? Wow. Well, let me say this. I think that we start with bringing something that is concrete to our school systems. And whether that's one committee, one principal, one faculty member at a time, it's getting behind what is taking place. And this is why we thought so much about this curriculum and how we were going to build it so that it can engage people who may not have ever danced, but they can see the learning through the curriculum. They can see the standards through the curriculum. And sometimes that's what it takes, right? So there was a time when dance was in schools and they, music was in schools and they took these out of schools so that the testing would get better. Well, we know that there's hard data that states that when someone moves, the connectivity between their learning increases tenfold. And so those are the type of things that are within this curriculum built in there really specifically to engage our administrators in the art of movement. Yes. And uh, Winifred, let's take a moment and look at uh, a testimonial uh, from a teacher who uses Korea movement. Beautiful. I'm so excited to be able to use the CREA curriculum this year. It's very rare that school systems, number one, have dance programs these days. But to have a curriculum to use that I didn't have to come up with at the beginning of the year or during the summer is amazing. That's not something that dance teachers get. So I really feel like it's going to help um, as a dance teacher to um, provide all of the things that the administrators in the building want 
um, as it relates to um, data and information that way. Um, it also is um, just very, very informative as a dance teacher, just hearing how other people would teach things and how um, the curriculum suggests that we present information to the kids. It is amazing, I can't wait to use it. So as we, as we wrap up here, um, you know, the, one of the questions that we receive the most is how can we find out more information? How much does the dance curriculum cost? And uh, we would invite you to go to our website at www.danceforschools.com. And on our website, we have further explanations of the curriculum. Uh, some sample lesson plans that you can download, as well as a curriculum enrollment guide. And so look for the curriculum enrollment guide. It will show you uh, the cost. Uh, you know, is it, are you subscribing for one year? Are you subscribing to three years? Um, can, are you an individual teacher? Are there multiple teachers? And so for everyone interested, we're going to invite you to, uh, to go check that out. So again, thank you so much, everyone. We love you, and we hope to see you uh, out, out there dancing with us. And if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you so much. Look at that. Yes, and Winifred. We... Hi, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a whole conversation about the beauty of professional development with the teachers. <laughs> oh, speak to that. I just gave a conversation. I pointed everyone to our website, uh, told them about our curriculum enrollment guide, and where they can find information. I also thank them and told everyone I love them, but I think you should as well. <laughs> oh, I would definitely love to. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember that professional development for dance teachers is really important. It's more than going to a show, but it's us coming in, guiding you, and you feeling free enough to move yourself without your students' eagle eyes on you, and you have the opportunity to engage with others. This was so great, and we can't wait to join you at your school via live or this way. Thank you. Have a Thank good you. one. See you all. Yeah. <laughs>